Hi guys, this is part two of the four and a half inch barrel build. If you haven't already seen the first episode, then I go and recommend you watch it, where we made the front axle and the fork, which you can see on the screen now. Before we start machining, I want to have a look at the castings. So here you can see them all slightly more organized than they were in the last episode. So now we're going to start with the chimney, which you can see on the screen now. Next is the cylinder, which you can see inside of the rear rims. Here's the crank on the screen. Next up is the flywheel. Here you've got various other castings and on the screen you can also see the chimney base ring which the chimney will attach to which will then attach to the chimney base. Here you can see the rear hubs with the front hubs coming up here and the front towing bracket as well as the box full of spokes. You've got the bigger ones which are the rear spokes and smaller ones are the front spokes. Here you can also see the front rims with the original welding on them. And here they are after being cleaned up. Here you can see the perch bracket in the miller, clamped down with two clamps and then you got some tin under it so that it was just at its levelest. Here you can see a cut being taken. Here it is with the top now fully cleaned up, the front fork which we made in the last video, if you haven't already seen that then you should go watch it, will sit on that face. Here you can see we've now blued the face and drilled the centre drill in it, next job is to drill it then we can bore it. Now we have drilled it and started to bore out the hole. Here you can see the boring head working. This is a different one than the one we used in the last episode. We're getting close for the pin to fit in now. As you can hear, the cut is a different sound as to before, that's because now we're only taking a very fine cut. As you can see here, the pin now fits in. The next job is then to mill off the surface which the head of the pin will actually sit on. As you can see we've got it clamped down with two clamps on parallels on the surface which we just machined. This is then where the head of the pin will sit. Now we've taken it down to the right height from the machine surface on the other side. Now the last thing to do on the perch bracket is just to do the radius of which you will sit on the smoke box. Here you can see the outside diameter of the smoke box door ring being turned. It hasn't cleaned up yet.
here it is just down the cut and outside. Here's a bit of machining on the smoke box door. First of all you can see it in the lathe track. Here's the front face cleaned up. Here's the back face cleaned up. This will eventually sit on the smoke box door ring. Here's the smoke box door ring on the rotary table, ready for the holes to be drilled into it. As you can see also the head is turned at 90 degrees. Here you can see the smoke box tube is now on to the smoke box door ring. We drilled the main four ones and put rivets in them first to hold it in place and now you can see one of the other holes being drilled. Here you can now see one of the holes being drilled out to the full size. Now I just had to repeat that a lot of times until it looked something like this. Here you can see a view from the top with the bolts in. The next job will be once we drill the rest of the holes then we'll be able to start drilling the top holes. Here you can see the inside ring. This is what will be in between the smoke box tube and the boiler. Once we then get all the holes drilled, then we will put it onto the boiler and then we'll drill through and then you can bolt it to the boiler and then that will be it fastened to the boiler. Here you can see an inside view after all the holes being drilled and the bolts being put in. Now you can see an outside view of all the rivets on the top and the bottom. The next job will be to do the radius on the perch bracket. Then we can drill the holes through the perch bracket and into the smoke box tube. Here you can see the radius starting to be cut. Currently only touching on one side. The reason for that is because one side is thicker than the other, so we have purposely put it to one side. Now it's just time to cut on the other side as well. Here you can see the thicker side is almost cleaned up. Now it's definitely touching on both sides, which means that we're starting to get closer to having a nice radius on it. The way we've done this is we've got a boring head, and then we've got the boring bar sticking out 5 inches from the centre of the boring head. Here you can see the radius is now cut and the smoke box is sitting on it nicely. Here you can see we've blued it with two lines of where we need to drill the holes. The best way I could think of to get it centred in the right spot was I found two tight nuts that fitted tightly in the hole for the pin, screwed them onto the bolt, put the bolt into the chuck of the miller and then I just put it into position of the centre of it as the hole is in the centre and then hope for the best as we drilled the hole. Now you can see there's two bolts holding it on. This should then hold it enough to be able to drill the rest of them. Here you can see the first row of bolts now in there and the same thing on the other side with the holes drilled. Now we have the all the rivets in as you can see with the inside view. Next we drill the hole for the chimney. This is slightly smaller than the inside diameter of the chimney base and was drilled using a hole saw. Here you can see it now off the miller with all the rivets in for all of it. Next thing to do is try it on the boiler. 
here you can see it's now sitting on the boiler very tight fit this is going to be the end of this episode but if you are enjoying this series then make sure to leave a like and subscribe the reason why this one's a little bit shorter is because now i'm hoping to make more episodes that are slightly shorter